In a traditional monolithic application, all components are bundled into one system, which makes communication between parts relatively simple. However, in a microservices architecture, the application is split into multiple smaller services, often deployed across different servers or containers. This flexibility allows microservices to be deployed or updated independently, saving time and effort. But with so many services running independently, how do they find and communicate with each other? This is where service discovery comes in. It's the mechanism that allows applications to locate and communicate with services dynamically within a microservices architecture. Let's break it all down with practical examples. Service discovery is the process by which services in a microservices architecture automatically discover each other on the network. So imagine you have 10, 20 or even 100 services running. Instead of hard coding IP addresses or URLs for every service connection, you allow the system to dynamically locate services based on their service name or other identifiers. The service registry is a key part of service discovery. A service registry needs to be highly available and up-to-date. Service instances must be registered with and deregistered from the service registry. In a cloud platform, every service has many instances and each instance is being used by an application or a user. In terms of adding a new service to the system, it is common to use the self-registration pattern in which the service instance is responsible for registering and deregistering itself with the service registry. Also, if required, a service instance sends a heartbeat request to prevent its registration from expiring. Third-party registration allows delegation of service registration or deregistration tasks to a third-party registrar, such as a service manager component in this case. On service instance startup, service manager is responsible for registering the service with the service registry. Similarly, it can deregister services on shutdown. With this option, service resiliency can be better handled as service manager can handle this request more elegantly than self-registration, where a service can abruptly go down with service registry not being aware. Service discovery operates in two main ways, client-side discovery and server-side discovery. In client-side discovery, the client is responsible for determining the service locations. It queries a service registry and uses the information to connect to the appropriate service. Imagine you are running an e-commerce platform. You have separate services for inventory, user authentication, and payment processing. When a customer places an order, the order service needs to communicate with both the inventory service to check stock and the payment service to process the payment. With client-side discovery, your order service would ask a service registry like Console or Eureka for the location of the inventory service. The registry responds with a list of available instances and the order service selects one to send its request. This dynamic discovery means that even if a service instance goes down or gets moved to a new server, the system can automatically find other healthy instances. In server-side discovery model, the client sends a generic request to a central load balancer or gateway, which handles the discovery process and forwards the request to the correct service. Take an example of an online banking system. When a user logs in, the system might need to fetch their account details, transactions, and loan information from three different services. Instead of each microservice querying the registry directly, the request is routed through a server-side load balancer like AWS Elastic Load Balancing. The user sends a request to the load balancer and the load balancer asks the service registry for available services. And once it has the service locations, it directs the user request to the appropriate microservices and aggregates the results. In this case, the load balancer abstracts the discovery process from the client, making it easier to manage. The assumption is that the registry tracks availability of services using a heartbeat mechanism. So, to make service discovery work, a few critical components are involved. Service registry is the database that keeps track of which services are running and their locations. For example, Eureka, Council, or Zookeeper. Health checks ensure that only healthy services are listed in the registry. If a service goes down, it's removed from the registry until it's back online. And finally, load balancing. Whether client side or server side, load balancing ensures requests are distributed evenly among available service instances. So, why is service discovery so crucial? And there are three main reasons. As new instances of services are added or removed, service discovery dynamically adjusts, enabling you to scale your application seamlessly. And if a service instance fails, service discovery ensures that other instances can be used without manual intervention. And finally, it reduces the complexity of managing services, making it easier for developers to focus on core business logic. For example, Netflix uses Eureka for client-side discovery, allowing their services to scale based on demand without worrying about their service locations. Eureka Server is one of the most popular service discovery solutions, primarily used in microservices architecture for dynamic service registration and discovery. Eureka Server is part of Netflix's open source Spring Cloud stack. Its core role is to serve as service registry, where microservices can register themselves and discover other services without knowing their exact network locations. 
Eureka clients send periodic heartbeat messages to the server to let it know they are still active. If a service stops sending heartbeats, Eureka removes it from registry. Eureka also allows client-side load balancing, be it with Ribbon or Spring Cloud Load Balancer, where the client picks a healthy instance from multiple registered service instances. While Eureka is widely used, there are also several other popular service registry solutions. Each offers unique features based on scalability and cloud environment. We'll use Eureka for a simple example here. Suppose we have two microservices, a user service which manages user data and an order service which retrieves user details from user service to handle orders. Eureka will help order service discover user service without hard coding the network address. So the first thing we need to do is a service registry where all the service can register themselves. For this, we are obviously using Eureka server. So in the main class here, you can see we have annotated the application with at enable Eureka server. And this makes our Spring Boot application a Eureka server, which will act as the central registry. In the application.properties file, we configure the server to run on port 8761 and set it up to only act as a server. It won't register itself as a client or fetch a registry. Once this is done, we have our Eureka server up and running. Next, we have our microservice called user service that needs to register itself with the Eureka server. In the user service application class, we have at enable Eureka client to register this service with Eureka server. We also have a simple REST controller that returns user details based on the provided user ID. And in the application properties file, we specify the following. The application name is user service, it runs on port 8081, and the Eureka server URL is set to register this service. Now, every time the user service starts, it registers itself with the Eureka server and becomes discoverable by the other services. Now, let's look at our second service, order service. The service needs to call the user service to fetch user details. We use at enable Eureka client again to register order service with Eureka. And within the order service application, we inject a REST template to make HTTP calls. Notice how the REST template has the at load balanced annotation. This allows it to automatically use Eureka to discover services by name. In this case, we'll call the user service by its registered name user service. And the Eureka server provides the actual URL. In the application.properties file, we configure our order service. So here is what happens. When order service receives a request, it doesn't need to know the exact location of the user service. Instead, it queries Eureka by service name, retrieves the service location, and fetches the user details. So let's summarize. Eureka server acts as a central registry where services like user service and order service can register. User service registers itself so that other services can discover it. An order service doesn't know the actual URL of the user service, but asks Eureka for the location based on its name, user service. When a request is made to the order service, it queries users Eureka to dynamically locate user service and fetch user information without hard coding any URLs. This is the core idea behind service discovery, which you can easily expand for more complex microservices architectures.